Welcome back it's to Plus Politics. Let's talk real politics now. A barrage of criticism have trailed President Muhammadu Buhari's decision over the appointment of his personal assistant on social media, Loretta Onoche, as a resident electoral commissioner nominee of the Independent National Electoral Commission representing Delta State. However, a senior advocate of Nigeria and human rights activist Femi Falano objected to this move, saying a card-carrying member of a registered political party is not fit for such a role. The People's Democratic Party, uh, former Senator in Kogi West, that's uh, Senator Dino Melaye, and others referred to the decision as unconstitutional. How unconstitutional is this position? We'll be discussing that this evening, and we have joining us the Executive Director of Center for Democracy and Development, CDD, Idayat Hassan. Um, good evening, madam. Good evening. Yeah, good to have you. Um, you your, your, your group is also very, very vocal to say that uh, this is unacceptable. But please, bring us up to speed. Is it a question of the law or a question of morality. I haven't not listened to uh, Onoche as we speak, but some would say that what's the guarantee that she is a card carrying member of the ruling party? Because working with government may not mean being in the party. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that submission, but the fact remains that the constitution is clear that a card carrying member of a political party cannot be a member of INEC. Don't even forget that INEC itself has rights, which is independent. And anybody like Onoche cannot be independent. That is if she is not a card carrying member of APC. That's one. This and on several occasions impugn the integrity of elections. And this is well documented. During the 2019 elections, she put several fake news posts suggesting that the elections is compromised or defaming people. Such a person should not be seen to be a part of the election. And even our stance as an APC spokesperson depicts that she can never be independent. So why have such a person on the INEC commission? Don't okay. forget all, yes. No, 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 continue. Let me allow you to finish your thoughts. But this appointment is affecting the work we have done in the last nine years. Since 2011, all the gains in our elections is being thrown down the tree for with complete disregard to con con constitution and morality and good conscience. Okay, okay, let, uh, uh, having established that, even though we are yet to listen to her, to see her, I also agree with some of these views you've mentioned. But let's look at some scenarios, you know. When we talk about oath of neutrality, um, you remember the recent one that happened in Ondo State. Even when it, it was proven to be false, you know, when PDB raised the issue that the returning officer, we know that's an ad hoc job, Returning officer as is a crony of the sitting governor and is also from the same village of the governor. And the response of INEC then was, do not worry, the process is transparent. There is little or, or nothing that the officers can do. So if we have a transparent system, does it really matter? Because when you look at the fact that he's the president that will appoint, the president is not likely to appoint somebody he doesn't know. Don't you think so? agree and that is why there has been recommendations that this appointment should not be done by the president exactly. but this instance is different it's a constitutional issue 
it's a clear breach of the constitution. Maybe the appointers did not note that there has been a change in the constitution hmm. by virtue of the 2010 amendment where a national commissioner or resident electoral commissioner is not meant to di display partisan loyalty. Hmm. Okay, w what about the other point I also raised? Uh, can we also have a process where there is little or nothing a human factor can do, talking about the electoral process itself? Even if we introduce all forms of technology into election, don't forget it is people who will man the technology. So if a person who has gone on social media to willfully spread fake news, <laughs> impugning the integrity of elections, who is well documented both by local and international media of spreading fake news is now representing a part of a country on the electoral commission what do you expect will be the outcome of any such process okay idayat can you help me let's assume that both of us are on the same page now should that lead, should that name even be read at all on the on, on the red chamber if all these are clear facts or are we having because when you said that uh, they've destroyed all the consolidation you've had in the next nine years i was going to disagree with you that she has not yet been screened so why conclude that uh, this battle has been lost it's not lost and we will not allow all gains we have made in the last nine years to be lost the problem is the main suggestion, recommendation of a person of Loretta is an anomaly. So it doesn't destroy it yet? It's yet to destroy it. And we will not allow, as actors who have been part of the process, who have given a lot to strengthen the process for such to happen. And you will see that there are a barrage of press statements for press conferences, and there will be petition to the Red Chamber to ensure that she is not considered. Because uh, my worry with the issue you're raising, I'm seeing it beyond what is likely to happen and what will not happen to Loretta. I'm looking at this idea of neutrality. You know, listening to Femi Falano was citing some sessions of the Constitution that the person must not be partisan. And we have a situation, not just in Nigeria, everywhere, where you hardly see people who are not partisan. So is it about what you've written on Twitter or what these individuals have done? So how do we ensure non-partisan umpire? I remind you, madam, you remember in 2015 when... Uh, Urubebe, you know, accused the INEC chairman then, that Professor Jega, of being biased, of being partisan, of being sectional. He used all manner of derogatory words. But how do we even ensure that such words do not even come in at all? I think that we have to change that point process. The U.S. Panel Committee report on electoral reform was clear. But that recommendation was not taken off. Secondly, also, you have to understand that we do not uh, we do not actually operate a mixed electoral system where you can have politicians, NGOs, experts in this country. Our is a immediately independent, and this will not be the first time that a nomination has been rejected. Don't forget that of recent, a resident electoral commissioner representing us two was dropped for being a partisan politician. Okay. So talking about this, um, you know, 
addressing the, the, the appointment process. There are a whole lot of issues. Um, and uh, the, 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 the debate on UA's report has come up again. Because I recall part of the issues we have currently is even the funding of INEC. You know, the presidency or the executive will have to you know, approve the funding. And there seems to be some kind of, uh, you know, some things that muzzle the Electoral Commission. So can you come up with some other suggestions apart from what the waste report has mentioned? And if you want to also dig up some of the recommendations on your waste report. So Good. I'm saying that the funding is now uh, part of the first con consolidated fund. So they are on a first line charge. Interesting. It's only the process that is often stifled when they need additional funds. But since 2015, the National Assembly has worked towards ensuring that resources are gotten as at when due. Now, what is very important we do is, for instance, change the appointment process of the, of the national commissioners and the resident electoral commissioners. Make the resident electoral commissioners, for instance, subject to Abuja, which is the national commission, because they also have too much powers and which is often abused. Create an electoral offenses commission where there will be some retrial of all electoral malpractices during elections. In fact, change our system to the first past the post system, to that of proportional representation, such that we can change this winner's change all attitude, which is affecting elections and governance in this country. There is a need for us to revisit the waste panel commission report, the Unamani electoral reform report itself, and even start talking about the judiciary and the way cases, election petition, are handled in this country. By the time we have all those reform in places and we have good governance, we will not be having appointments which is unnecessarily eating up the policy like this. Hmm. Okay, you just touched on one issue that I quickly want you to dwell more on, and that has to do with the role of the judiciary in this election. I will rem remind you some of those arguments we've also had in the past. I recall um, a governorship election your case that has to do with River State, and some people were saying, oh, if we have the likes of uh, the wife of the former uh, uh, River State governor, that's um, uh, Justice, I'm trying to remember now, the former governor Maybe of- Maybe uh, Yeah, good, Odili, and some people felt, and I'm asking, why should she be denied a role? She rose up to become a justice of the Supreme Court, and when the case has to do with being appointed, why should she be excused? Don't you think these are issues that we also need to address in ensuring neutrality? I think that the issue of appointment is not even the core issue. What is important is that election petitions are concluded before the swearing in of any elected officials. Secondly, is changing the burden of proof. The burden of proof is always on the petitioner, and that is unfavorable. The burden of proof should go back to INEC to show that he has actually conducted the elections properly. He strict uh, this uh, conformity with the Electoral Act and the Constitution, and the respondent to prove that he or she has won the elections. And to ensure that cases are no longer declared based on technicalities. Those three important reforms will go a long way in strengthening elections. Hmm. 
Thank you so much. I'm so sorry that uh, time will not permit us to continue this conversation, but it's been quite interesting to have your take, consistent with your take. And maybe in a few hours or a few days or a few uh, weeks from now, we'll listen to Anoche if she has to say anything or if anybody will have to defend her position. Because for now, it's been more of quietude from our side. Thank you once again, Idaya Hazan, the Executive Director for Center uh, for Democracy and Development, CDD. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. And we'll go on a breather. And when I come back, I will be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. While the drums of criticism continue over this move by the presidency, we will await. We will support this move because even the party men in the ruling party are definitely quiet. Even the presidency where she is associated with are yet to explain to us on several questions that have been asked. Probably this issue should not even be discussed or tabled on the floor of the Senate. You will wonder, what is the essence of fair airing? What is the essence of being included? I advise the presidency to do the needful by dropping this name and let us not destroy the, the, the record, the good record that has been that we've had so far about the Independent National Electoral Commission. I insist that Onoche should continue her job of what she's doing, and if our principal finds it very interesting and find her very useful, let her continue with her job as an SA and not resident electoral commissioner. And that's my take tonight. Plus Politics returns tomorrow at 7 p.m. on the same station. I remain yours truly, Kayode. Lada Indi, saying bye for now.